When a variable is passed into a function, the variable is borrowed mutably, immutably, or the function takes ownership of the variable. For example, let's say that we have a string called s. If the function f takes a string as input, then this function f will take ownership of the string s, so we will not be able to use this string s inside the main function after we call the function f. If we try, the code will not compile. The ownership has moved inside the function f. We can also pass a data into a function by giving it an immutable reference. The function will not be able to mutate this data. However, it will be able to read from it. Passing an immutable reference to a function does not give ownership of the data to the function. Hence, after calling the function f, we can still use this variable s. And finally, if we give a function a mutable reference, then this function can modify this data. However, the ownership does not transfer into the function. Hence, after calling the function f, we can still use this variable s. Now, when we create closures, the closure captures variables in the same manner that we discussed above. They can either borrow a mutable reference, borrow a mutable reference, or take ownership of the value. Let's look at example of each of these cases. Let's start with borrow immutable. So I'll begin by initializing a variable called s. Next, I'll create a closure that captures this variable. Let's say that f is equal to a closure that simply prints this s. Print ln. This will be an example of a borrowing. Here, the closure f captures the variable s, which is defined over here, as an immutable reference. Hence, the ownership of s remains inside the main function. So after calling the function f, we'll still be able to use this variable s. For example, after calling the function f, we can call println, say main, s, and execute the code. And it says borrow, a crab emoji, and then inside main, another crab emoji. So this is an example of how closures borrow immutable reference. Now let's take a look at a mutable reference. So again, I'll first declare a string called s, and this time I'll make this mutable. Let's create a closure that f is equal to vertical bar and to this string s, we'll append a string, let's say world. So this closure is going to take a mutable reference to the variable s and then it's going to append the string world to this s. Let's try calling this function and what you'll notice is that the code does not compile. It says cannot borrow f as mutable. Consider changing this to mute. When we take a mutable reference inside a closure, we need to declare the closure as mute. Save the file and the code compiles. Again, since the closure is capturing this variable s as a mutable reference, we can still use this variable s inside the main function after calling the function f. So we can print this s after modifying the string s. Let's try executing the code again. Then you get main is crab emoji world. In the last example, let's take a look at taking ownership of value t. Let's create a closure that takes ownership of the value. Again, we'll start with the string s. Then let's create a closure. Let f equals vertical bar. And inside here, we'll do something. Let's do something with this variable s. To force the transfer of ownership of this string s into the closure f, we need to prefix this closure with a keyword called move. This will force the closure to take ownership of whatever variable that it captures. In this case, it captures the variable s, so the ownership of s will move inside the closure f. Let's also print this out, print ln. And to show you that the ownership has transferred over inside the closure f, let's call the function f once, and the code compiles. Now, if we try to call the function again, the code will not compile. This is because the ownership of the variable s moves inside the closure f. Once f is called, this variable s is dropped. So if you try to call again, since this s has already been dropped, it can no longer be called. This behavior is similar to what we saw over here. If the function f took in a string, and then we call f, then the ownership of this string s transfers over to the function f. So if you try to call this again, the code will not compile. So this is the same behavior that we see over here. We can only call the closure f once, since the ownership of the string s moves inside the closure. Once the closure is done executing, this s is dropped. Hence, we can call it only once. Another way to show you that this s has transferred over inside the closure is to try printing it out. If you try to print this, again, the code will not compile. s has transferred inside the closure. Let's try executing this code. Execute the code and we get move with a crab emoji. So in this video, we looked at three examples of how closures can capture variables. They can capture the variable as an immutable reference, as a mutable reference or take ownership of the value.